Hey guys, it's Mr. G, and in this video, I'm going to go over Unit 5, Lab 1, Page 2. Our goal for this page is to see how a list being unsorted or sorted affects search algorithms. Now, unsorted data requires us to look at every single item because we cannot eliminate any items. We can't like figure out a way to kind of like avoid looking at every single item because there's no rhyme or reason to the order that every item is in. So if we want to look for something, we got to go through everything if the list is kind of mixed up. Now, this isn't really detrimental when we're looking at a small list with like 20 items, for example, because a computer can go through 20 items really fast. But imagine that you're working at Facebook and you have to create a person search algorithm and Facebook has over 2 billion people on the platform. Now, just by chance, the person you lo you're looking for might be the last person in the list. So you're going to have to go through over 2 billion people before you find the person you were looking for, before you find your match. And that might take a long time. And if there's millions of people using the service at the same exact time, it's just going to be really slow for everyone. So ideally, we have all our lists sorted so that we can use some kind of like really good algorithm for finding something. But when we have an unsorted list, we really got to go through every item. So that is exactly what we have to do in the for you to do. We have to build a position of number in unsorted list block that reports the earliest location of a number in an unsorted list or reports not in list if the number is not in the list. Instead of doing it in snap, I'm going to use JavaScript. What? Some of you guys may be wondering why I'm doing this and why I would, why I would like try a different language, but actually, Snap is JavaScript in disguise. Yeah! So you're going to see that some of the blocks that I'm going to use in JavaScript are the same ones that I would use in Snap. So Snap is just a little bit of a higher level language than JavaScript. And it's a little bit easier to read. It's a little bit easier to code for humans to use. So we would say that Snap is higher level than JavaScript. Now on the screen, I've already gone ahead and created an unsorted list with 10 items in it. If you look carefully, you can see that there's 10 numbers, there's no order to them, and I just like threw them out randomly. So what I have to do if I want to find the position of an item is I have to go through every single item. And in Snap, I would use the for each block. And guess what? Because Snap is based on JavaScript, I can use the for each block in JavaScript. Now, it might not be the most efficient way to do it, but I'm going to do it anyway in this way, just so you guys can see how much it, how similar it is to Snap. Okay, so I created my unordered lists, and what I want to do is I want to create this block that they asked me to create. And the block is going to be a function in JavaScript. In Snap, it would be a reporter, but it's going to be called position of number in unsorted list. And this block is going to have two inputs. One is the position of the number that I'm going to be looking for, and the second input is the list. So let's do that. Let's add the number that the person's going to be looking for and the actual list that is going to be used. So this is how I write inputs in JavaScript. You put them in parentheses. And in Snap, you guys see them like already as like little bubbles that, uh, that are open to be to put something into. Okay, so in this block, I'm going to report not in list if it doesn't find the number in the list. So actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a variable inside of this block. So it's going to be really a script variable and I'm going to call it the result. And I'm actually going to set the result equal to not in list. And if we don't find the number in the list, that's what I'm going to report. Now in JavaScript, we don't call it report. We call it return, but it's the same idea. So we're going to return the result. And if it doesn't find the item in the list, I'm never going to change the result, this variable that I've created, the script variable that I've created. All right, now here's where the fun part starts. I have to create a for each block to go through every item in the list and check to see if it equals the number that the person passed in um, when they first called the block. So I have to use the for each block. And I have to use that for each block on the list over here that was passed in. So list dot for each and the for each block takes in another block that looks at the item 
and also the position or the index of the of whatever I'm looking for. So for example, if I'm looking at the first item in the list, it's going to tell me by putting this by putting position over here, I can actually have it tell me what position we're actually looking at, what index we're looking at. Um, now this might look a little bit tricky, but if you follow along, it really isn't too bad. All right, and what I'm going to do is, as I'm going through each item, I'm going to check to see if the item equals the number that was passed in, so num. So I'm really checking to see if item equals num, and as you can see, when I highlight num, like num highlights everywhere. So this is the num that I'm checking, that I'm looking for. And if item equals num, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the result equal to the position. All right, so as the for each block in JavaScript looks at every item, it's also keeping track of the position that it's looking at in this way. Now in Snap, you might be able to use a different block. Uh, I can't remember off the top of my head right now which block, but it's the same idea. So basically what, what this is doing is that if it finds the number, if the number equals the item that we're looking for, we are going to change the result to the position, and then I'm gonna return or report the position. Okay, let's actually try this out and see if it works. Let me take a get rid of some spaces in here because in order for me to use the block, I actually have to write it out like this. Uh, position of number in unsorted lists and the number that I'm going to be looking for is, let's see, 65. And the list that I'm going to use is called unsorted list. Okay. Now, if I run it right now, I don't think it's going to show anything in my terminal. So this is like the say block. I'm going to have to use like a say block basically so that I can see what happens here. Okay. So I think if I run this, it should tell me the position of 65 in my unsorted list. And it's basically going to go through every single item in the list even after that. Uh, so let's actually run it. Let's do, oh, I'm in my desktop already. So I got to actually call the file and if I hit enter, it says position one. Now you guys may be wondering, hey, how come it's saying position one if it's actually position two? But the, the way that JavaScript works in most programming languages is that they are zero based. So the first number is always zero um, or the index is zero for the first value. In Snap, they start at one just to make it a little bit easier for people to use the index of and understand what's actually happening. But that is not too worrisome because all I need to do is let's say I set position equal to or result equal to position plus one. So no matter what the position is, I just add one to make it like obvious or to make it like, I guess the snap version. And if I run this again, it says position two. Actually, I can, I can add that. Uh, I could actually write this out as a, like this, let's say the position of the position is, and then it'll say one, two or one, whatever it was. There we go. So the position is, and actually I should remove that because when I use a comma in the console.log, it actually adds a space in there. So the position is two. So the number I was looking for is 65. Now let me try a value that actually isn't in the list. So let me try the value of, I don't know, 83. I don't think that's in the list. So if I hit save, and I run it again, you'll see that the position is not in list and it does exactly what I want. Now for each might not be the best block to use because for each goes through every single item in the list, even though it told us to just report the earliest location of a number. And once we find that number, we don't really have to go through the other items in the list. So you see why this might not be an efficient way to do things, but it works. Let me just try uh, a few more values. So if I change the inputs, the number that we're looking for to 13, okay, now that I've changed how the position or the index of works in JavaScript, it should report that it's at position one, the position's one. And let me try 38 just to make sure that it says position 10. And if I run it again, the position is 10, perfect. So our position of number and unsorted list block works, 
even though it's not in Snap. So I did it in JavaScript to kind of challenge you guys to start reading different code or code in a different format um, and to try to give you guys a, like a little bit of a hint without giving you the complete answer in Snap because you're going to have to make a bunch of modifications to make this work in Snap. If you're going to be searching in sorted data, you're going to have a whole bunch of more information to locate the position of a specific number, for example. So if you look at the algorithm that Alfie and Betsy are talking about that cuts the list in half each time it guesses, that's what you have to implement. And I know that some of you guys did implement it in the last part of the lab in page one when you created your number guesser. But if you haven't, a more efficient way to find a number in a sorted list is to basically guess the value that's at the halfway mark or the halfway point of the entire list. And if it's sorted, all right, if you're too high or too low, then you can just easily cut out half of the list and you don't need to even search through those items. So for example, um, over here in the list, an awful list, let's say I look at position seven first and my number, the number I'm looking for is 73, all right, uh, 21 will be too low, so I don't have to look at position 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, because I already know that at position 7, we're still not at the answer, and it's too low. So then I could start going half and half and half and half until I actually find the correct answer. Now, that's what you guys have to do. That's your challenge. You guys have to create a block, the position of number blank in sorted list that actually does this, that actually implements this algorithm that cuts the list in half each time it guesses or each time it's looking through something. I'm not going to show you guys how to do that one because I'm going to leave it up to you guys to figure it out. But now that I've shown you how to create, it, create an unsorted list algorithm searcher, uh, you can just modify it a little bit to do exactly what we just said. So I hope you guys are able to succeed at creating this algorithm. If not, make sure you pair program it. If you talk about it with your partner or with your neighbor or with your friend, you might be able to figure it out or modify, tweak my algorithm a little bit to make it work right.